Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. That scene is, uh, that, that scene when she's walking away with, with Ultra and the, and the little piglet. And the, the, the mom, the, like the two, the parents of the piglet, they, they cry out and then all of them start crying out. <clears throat> Even the ones like up the, going up the, the conveyor belt start crying out like that. And the, the, like a very, um, yeah, it, that, that scene hit. It does. Every, <laughs> every time, man, every time. What what are your thoughts on the um since I, I brought it up in the write up, what what are your thoughts on, on, on people um shaming movies that are released uh digitally first with like a limited theatrical run? I know a lot of people, specifically cinephiles and movie lovers, have a big, big problem with that. Um but but my, my counter argument to them, right? Is that a movie like this, Okja, would probably have been stuck in development hell had not Netflix came and, and, and kind of rescued it and gave it a voice, you know, because whether we like it or not, everybody has a Netflix account or one of their family members or friends' passwords, you know, people are mm. on Netflix daily. So with, you know, Netflix swooping in and taking on this project, as much as we might have liked it to be on the bigger screen, like, you know, fully, I don't think uh, we would have gotten this movie at all had it not been for, you know, those platforms. So, you know, even veering away from the actual subject matter, I feel like that's a big, big thing is that we're living in this digital age and a lot of people are scared by it or they think that, you know, it, they're, they're at, out to kill theaters. But at the same time, we're going to get a lot of, of, of um, you know, projects that I don't think that would be financed, you know, because no, no big studio, Paramount and them are not going to be like, yeah let's take on you know the meat industry no way dude no yeah. way um yeah dude i think that um like i know in 20 like 2015 when it you know when they announced it and stuff like that and then when netflix bought the rights i know it was a little bit um you know people were were pissed off at that and and, and they had their you know um they felt a certain way about it and people to this day feel, feel a certain way about it, you know, but I think that, um, like you said, it, we're with this and then now, like we're getting stuff now, even with, you can even say maybe what Apple, they just took home the, the Oscar for best picture for Coda. You can even say that that, I mean, who knows if, if someone would have picked that up and, and, and that, you know, so they, they gave them the opportunity to, to release on Apple 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 um, plus, TV, and yeah. it won the Oscar plus TV, and it won the Oscar. Um, and there's this whole there's there's arguments, you know, around it going each in every way you can possibly think of. You know, um, I don't think it's going to kill the industry, like the theater industry, as much as people are complaining about or were complaining about. Um, and even now, like, you know, <clears throat> going with the whole, like, you know, pandemic and, you know, we're still in it, you know, with movies being released before or the same day as the theaters, like, you know, I don't have a problem with it. I even, you know, because I know people that are still afraid to go to the theaters or still don't want to go to the theaters because of it. Um, and, and I think a lot of times, I think in 2015, back, back then, you know, five, six years ago, people were maybe afraid that it, we weren't going to get the, the, the same quality, I guess, as something that was going to be released in the theater. But Netflix, Hulu, Apple, um, HBO Max, they've all shown that they can pump out, you know, award-winning TV shows and movies for streaming. So I think it's the future and people just have to put up with it. Definitely. But, I mean, on, on the other hand, I do think that 
it's a shame that n n more people weren't able to to see something like this on a big screen like I, like I wasn't able to but I, I wish I could have because I feel like it would have been an epic experience you know what I mean so um it's kind of like it's kind of a shame in that way but I feel like the taking the Netflix route got the message out to you know probably million, yeah. millions of people who would have never thought to buy uh, a ticket to something like this especially with you know from the trailer and everything how it seems on the surface level of what it's about it's just um i think it, we were better off for this style of of release you know and mm. uh, i think back then um <laughs> like netflix originals were still kind of uh at least movies were like a newer thing and people are you get scared or they think that uh they don't like people don't like change you know but but i think at least for for this one i'm glad that uh it happened and i think it's a very very near perfect uh movie and experience yeah i don't think you can um I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Like you, like you said, it's it's damn near perfect. <laughs> even uh, even the, the 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 CG, I feel like it looks um, it's does it's not distracting. You know, you have this big kind of hippopotamus looking pet, and it's just you just run with it. You know, and uh, especially the insert shots of Okja's eyes are like, man, you just feel like the pain and the fear, or even when, you know, after she goes through like the, the, the kind of traumatic things that end up happening to her. And then she ends up almost attacking Mija, you know, because it's like, I feel like in, in real life, animals do have like, they psychologically can break because of this torture and stuff that happens to them and then they end up going you know kind of nuts in a way and i feel like that they did a great job of of kind of portraying that where oak jaw is just over it by the time she gets to the parade and and kind of starts attacking even like her owner because of, she doesn't know what's going on you know mm -hmm. and there's this great moment where paul dano's character like is trying to save Mija and he's going to hit Okja with this a mic stand. And even though Okja has grabbed Mija by her arm uh, and she's in certain danger, she still stops Dano from, you know, she catches the mic stand and doesn't allow him to, to hit her. And, and that speaks volumes in itself, you know, right there, that little detail. <clears throat> yeah. The, um, the um it, it's going back to the cgi i think that you kind of i don't know like me personally watching it like after the first 10 minutes and you, you see the relationship she has and then how well um, um she the actress who plays major it was like her first role right yeah i think she might have done some stuff for tv but i don't think she was in film yet so it was like i think it was the, her d debut the um the chemistry she has with this thing that's not even there i mean i'm sure they had like a stand in or something there for her to, to to act with um you almost like forget that it's cgi you know yes. and at the end of the movie you do forget and, and, and because of how, how emotionally attached you are to, to Okja and, and, and Mija's um, relationship. Yeah, even like very simplistic things like when she whispers in, you know, in her ear or little things like that. It's just, I don't know. It's especially because it's CGI, it just, it does, it, it's better than it has any right to be. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of crazy that they that Netflix gave them fifty million dollar a budget of fifty million um, in twenty fifteen. You know when when movies like that it was kind of new for movies to be straight to streaming. It shows the yeah. 
and I only, I, I mean, yeah, I think it was obviously a limited theatrical run, so I didn't probably wasn't playing on very many screens, but it only pulled in two million, I think, at the box office. Um, but well, I'm, sh I'm sure the streams made up for that, uh, you know. It didn't win, but I believe it was up for the Palm d'Or at, at Cannes as well. But yeah. there yeah. was, I think there was some controversy over people thinking that it wasn't uh, worthy enough because it wasn't, you know, a straight up theatrical film. But it's also like, but at the same time, it was shot competently and you can see, you know, the value there. Yeah. Regardless, but... I don't know. I do have uh, some quick swan facts if you want to hear them. Uh, let me hear those swan facts. You know, I'm a lover of, <laughs> of those. All right. I got a handful for you tonight. Uh, Tilda Swinton also produced the film, and this is her second time appearing in a Bong Joon Ho uh, movie as she also starred in Snowpiercer. Fucking. Jesus Christ, that fucking movie. <laughs> we also did a... I think it's been a couple years now. I think it might, it might have been over the pandemic. I can't quite call it because, you know, when you do this for as long as I've been, all the, all the episodes kind of blend together at some point or another. <laughs> but we did an episode on Snowpiercer, so check that out if you haven't. Everybody. Gotta go check it out. Um, the art direction of Oakjaw was inspired by, of course, a, a pig, a manatee, and a dog. Huh. I can see the manatee. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, they actually had a puppeteer, going back to what you just said, they had a puppeteer stand in for Oakjaw while shooting on set, so everything would feel and look accurate. Stuffies uh, is what they called them. Uh, Jake G. His his washed up zoologist take was inspired by real people, including Jimmy Seville and Johnny Morris, two over the top TV British hosts, who I think uh, were found to be um, criminals. Oh shit! Uh, in my last one. And I'm not sure if you noticed this or not, but uh, Brad Pitt produced the film with his studio Plan B. Yeah, I believe that's his. That's his uh, Plan B is his. Oh shit! I didn't even notice that. Yeah, dude, Brad Pitt, man. He, he also produced uh, Moonlight from A24. Did you know that? Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. <clears throat> I think he, I could be wrong, but I think he also produced uh, The Departed, which that one makes sense, but I don't yeah, know, man. <laughs> uh, Pitt, Pitt is awesome, dude. The goat, one of the goats. Uh, since we are in June, which is Pride Month, I thought it'd be really cool to take this opportunity to talk about a little horror film called Daniel Isn't Real. <laughs> which is streaming now on shutter so if you guys are interested in that uh hopefully you are and you haven't seen the film check it out it's got uh schwarzenegger's son in it which is fucking wild in itself um but yeah i love this movie and uh you know i can't wait to talk about it with whoever is on the show maybe it'll be you and james hopefully um but yeah next week coming down the pipe Daniel isn't real for Pride. Fuck Pride. yeah. Your reaction is hilarious. <laughs> You're like, well, I wasn't expecting that. Um, yeah. Uh, so we'll close out and I'll say if you are stumbling upon this podcast and you're not sure what we're about, we're operating out of San Diego, California, and we're available on a plethora of of uh, podcast platforms whether it be spotify stitcher speaker sodes apple podcast amazon uh luminary you name it we're on there 
Um, so check us out. Give us a, that sub- subscribe, um, a five-star review. And if you have